Olga Bottner, this year's prize must have been the most anticipated prize in the Nobel Prize's history. So why did we have to wait for more than an hour for the press conference? Oh, you, you have to understand that this, the decision about the prize is taken on the very same day when it is announced. So there was a discussion and there should be a discussion. Otherwise, if the prize is so anticipated and no one in the academy even have to come to the decisive meeting. And today there were a number of people there and there was a very good discussion and we landed on this prize which was announced. And these are two scientists, Anglar and Higgs, who actually wrote the theory in the 60s, 1964. So yeah. they had to wait even longer for the prize. Why so? Well, you know, there is a lot of theorists out there. And I'm an experimentalist myself, so you have to understand that my attitude towards theorists is okay. So there's a theor there are a lot of theories out there, there's a lot of theorists out there. But in the end, it's the interplay between experiment and theory which decides what nature has chosen as the grand scheme of things. And so it took 50 years for the prediction they made in 1964 to turn out to come true. And the thing which makes the prize interesting right now, you're asking why 50 years, is because of this observation of a new particle at CERN with the properties expected of. Uh, by the theory. So this is why. So sometimes you have to wait 50 years and sometimes the theory may turn out to not be true. And this is this so-called Higgs particle. This is a so-called Higgs um, particle. Yeah. Many people have heard about it. Why, why was it so hard to get it, to discover it? Well, there are several things. One thing is that the theory predicted that there ought to be a particle it could tell us the properties of this particle, so how it interacted with other particles, with matter particles and force carrier particles, but it couldn't tell us what the mass of this particle was. And so we didn't know where to look. And so actually for the past 50 years, this particle has been looked for at every accelerator in existence. So it has been looked for at the ISR, it has been looked for at the SPS at CERN, at the lab collider at the Tevatron. And this, is, this was an ongoing hunt. So from other properties, one could try to narrow the range of mass and one did so both at the at lab and, and the Tevatron. So in the end, we knew more or less that if it existed, it had to be there. And then the LHC came in. It is the most powerful accelerator in existence, could produce enough energy to make this happen. And so we found the particle. They got it. Why, why is this particle so important? Well, the particle in itself is not as important as the theory which it represents. So the theory tells us why we exist, more or less. Because as I said in my story, <laughs> this is a philosophical question then again, but maybe it tells us why we don't float away like the photon. I mean, we all know that we are massive. We know that we consist of atoms, and the atoms have atomic nuclei, protons and electrons, and neutrons, this is what we consist of. But according to the theories which existed before the mechanism was proposed, all these particles ought to have been massless. And we know that unfortunately we are massive, some are more massive than other people, but definitely not massless. So there was something wrong and the theory proposed the solution. And this is why the theory is important and the particles is important as a manifestation of this theory. So all particles get their masses from the Higgs field, the Higgs field theory. And uh, where, where does this Higgs particle exist? Is it here around us or where is it? <laughs> well, I have to modify this a little bit. All particles that we consist of get mass from the Higgs particle. There are particles which do not seem to interact with the Higgs particle, namely the neutrinos. And so the standard model is not completely complete. There are 
it is probably only a low energy approximation of something larger, which also explains the mass of the neutrinos, which also explains the dark matter. So at the moment we don't know, but electrons and protons and neutrons, the quarks inside them, get mass by interaction, interacting with the Higgs. So one way of looking at it is to imagine that the Higgs field is something which pervades all the universe. It's everywhere. It's here in the room, it's out in, in the black space, it's everywhere. And so every particle which moves through this field, and it's forced to, will interact with the Higgs particles, and in that way gets mass. All the time? Now? All the time. Mm -hmm. And we don't see we it? Don't feel, I mean, we are born like that, right? So we wouldn't, we wouldn't feel the field. But where does this field and the particle come from? Well, this is something that we actually don't know. I mean, this must have happened in the Big Bang somehow, that this is how our universe is constructed, that there is this field. It is possible that this field was part of the inflation process which blew up the universe from a very tiny size to what we have today. We also don't know that. We don't know if there's only one Higgs field or maybe there's more Higgs fields. So there are still mysteries to be solved. Um, if this Higgs particle is so crucial to the whole universe and the discovery was so hard to make, why didn't the people who made the discovery get the Nobel Prize? Well, this is, as you know, it's a very difficult question for me to answer because we are now at, not at liberty to divulge the discussions which take place inside the Nobel Committee or inside, indeed, the Academy when the decision is made. But let me just tell you that the decision on the prize is based on primarily the test of the, the will of Alfred Nobel, on the nominations which we receive this very year. And then we, of course, take into account the prestige and the tradition of the prize. Now, weighing all these things together, we came up, up with, with uh, the proposal of this year's prize. Mm -hmm. And now for the rest of the internal discussion, we'll have to wait 50 years. I see. Maybe next year. <laughs> um, you spoke to Francois Angler, one of the laureates, but not to Peter Higgs. That's right. Um, are, will you try to call him again? Uh, yes, we're going to try to call him later today. Yes. And actually, I think we left a message on his recorder that we have, not that the Academy that have been trying to call him, but the Stockholm has been trying to call him, and we hope that he will respond. But the rumor has it that he has gone into hiding for the rest of the week mm -hmm. in anticipation that, you know, since this prize was so anticipated, he knew that in either case, if he gets it, there will be a press storm. If he doesn't get it, there will also be a press storm. So it felt like it was better to go into hiding. So now we are in the middle of the storm. Yes. And the Higgs particle has been said to be the last uh, piece of the standard model puzzle for elementary particle physics. Is particle physics uh, over now? Is it finished? Well. The standard model is complete, so far so good, but as I already told you, there are still unsolved things. One is the neutrinos. They somehow don't fit completely into the standard model. They do have mass, but apparently they're not getting their mass through interactions with Higgs. There's also the question why the Higgs is so light. Maybe there are more, more Higgs particles, maybe this is just one of them and there are more to be found. So today the belief is that the standard model is a low energy approximation of a more complete theory. And this more complete theory is what particle physics is after now. So there are various speculations, supersymmetry may be a possible extension of the standard model. There are also people speaking of extra dimensions so that our four-dimensional world is just what we perceive of a larger ten-dimensional world and the other dimensions are just tiny rolled up and we don't see them. So there are many speculations out there and like with the Higgs, you know, experiment will eventually show which theory is the right one. Thank you very much, Dr. Doctor, for taking your time.